All right, hello everyone. This is your course creator. I am Professor D, and either you're in my class or you're taking this with another professor who is using my notes and my videos uh, as far as a way to teach you to deliver the class. I'm the person that created the course, and to get started, we're going to go over an idea of norms. So norms are subtle rules that guide our way of being, right? Uh, so think of this as co-agreed upon rules of what we would need in a situation of, or circumstance to be able to be or do our absolute best, right? So again, norms, it's like, but it's not just my role as your professor or your course creator to set the rules for you. We're gonna be talking about incredibly sensitive topics in this class. We're gonna be talking about race, racism, we're gonna talk about privilege, we're gonna talk about gender, we're going to talk about all types of stuff that are really difficult to talk about. And I find it's best to create some rules about how we're going to treat each other as we discuss these thoughts and ideas. So norms is our, our topic, is our topic, our opportunity to do that. So uh, today we're going to be covering course competencies. Number five, explaining similarities and differences in the basic elements of verbal and nonverbal communication, beliefs, and value systems across cultures. And we're going to be demonstrating strategies for resolving perceptual differences and identifying potential barriers to intercultural communication. By setting norms, we get a sense of what are the rules that are going to help us talk about race or rape or um, all types of these, sexual assault, uh, harassment, uh, racism, racist slurs. Uh, I'll tell you, this is a rated R class. We're going to talk about, we're going to say and explore words and slurs so we can understand what they do to people. Uh, so we're not gonna, just going to like say the blah word. We're going to like say the word so we can understand the word and what does the word do to us. Uh, so again, you know, if we're really going to talk about difficult concepts well, then it's a really great idea to get a sense of how do we want to choose to treat each other as we talk to and hear each other in a way that we can learn more from one another. So again, what are norms? So here's a short video that I've embedded in the slides and I'll play for you now. Uh, it's a standard or pattern, especially of social behavior that is typical of an expected group. Hi, I'm, I'm Social North, North but, but you, you can, can just call, call me North. North and I'm here to talk about normal social behavior, or social norms. What is a social norm? A social norm is the accepted, expected behavior of people within a social group. You'll first need to know what a social group is. Social groups are groups of people who interact with each other. Some examples of social groups are people in a family, people at school and in a classroom, or on a playground. People at an assembly. People at a sporting event. People in a doctor's office. People at a hospital. People at a concert. People at a movie. People at a store. People in a restaurant. Any group of people interacting with each other is a social group. Why are there social norms? Social norms help us to understand and predict what other people will do. What does the word norm mean? Norm is short for normal. In social groups, a norm is an expected or normal behavior. An unexpected behavior isn't a norm or normal behavior. Human beings and other social animals need norms to guide them and direct their behavior. Norms provide order and predictability in social interactions and relationships. Norms help people to make sense of and understand each other's actions. Let's talk about what happens when people do behave according to the social norm in an expected way. When a person behaves in an expected way, the people around them are comfortable because everything is normal. There is not a problem and there is nothing to worry about. Now, let's see what happens when people don't behave according to the social norm, but instead behave in an unexpected way. Who can tell me the answer for number four? 
it's too hard. I don't like it. I'm not doing it. When a person behaves in an unexpected way, the people around them are uncomfortable because something is unpredictable and not normal, which signals that there may be a problem. When a person acts unexpectedly, people are worried. There is usually a negative consequence for the person who is acting in an unexpected way. People might have negative thoughts about them. People might think the person is acting out on purpose, for attention, or to cause problems, or doesn't know how to behave normally. People might avoid them in the future. I don't understand your behavior. You are disrupting the class. Go take a break outside, then go to the office. I am going to have to write a note to your parents. So again, we get a sense of kind of what this is. And uh, if you'd like to understand this thought and idea a little bit better, watch the rest of the video. A little hint of what you can do if you want to move through videos a little bit more quickly is change your playback speed. Uh, I like to listen to things two times as fast because it helps me get through the content a little bit quicker. But if uh, English isn't your first language, maybe you just do 1.5 or 1.25, but it makes it so getting through the content of those videos is a little bit quicker. So with that, let's look at the suggested norms that I have, right? So these are norms I am suggesting that we adopt so we can have an excellent class together. So uh, first norm is see things differently and appreciate a different point of view, right? So in this class, we're gonna make it an expectation that we're all going to attempt to try to see things in a new way. And then we're also gonna try to see things, uh, see the value in seeing things differently, right? So for example, if I hold up something to you and I show it to you, I have my image that I see of it and my understanding of seeing it from my own perspective, but you see it completely differently than I do from a different perspective. And because you have a different perspective, you see things I don't see. And when I understand the way you see things and you understand the way I see things, we both see that object in a much more real way. Another thing I would ask for is attempt to reserve judgment. Now, a lot of times when people will submit a norm like this, they'll just say, no judgment. Well, I don't know if that's possible, right? Like, if I, if I see somebody with a blue mohawk, I'm going to notice, whoa, that's a blue mohawk. Now, do I have anything against blue mohawks? No but it is out of the norm, right? And I might think, well, maybe they like punk music, right? That in itself is a judgment because it's so atypical. I think in my head, whoa, that's different color hair. Whoa, that's a different color haircut. Because I'm thinking of those things, those are judgments. It's almost impossible to have no judgments, but we're gonna try to be like, okay, those are judgments and I really don't know this person. So what I want to do is slow down and better understand who this person is and not just make them a walking haircut and take the time to understand who this person is. Another thing is in this class, you are going to respond to things in a lot of different ways, right? Now with that, I say that there's not really wrong answers, uh, especially like in discussion boards, either you don't like talk about the things I'm looking for in the rubric or you do, but it's just because you might have an idea wrong or you say something in a way that maybe other people are like, whoa, I don't know if that's the right way to say stuff. Uh, it doesn't mean it's wrong. Um, we're just trying to explore different thoughts and ideas and understand. In this class, we want to explore ideas and understand them better. Um, it's too much to expect everyone to always never think something racist or uh, say something sexist. These things are gonna happen sometimes. What we wanna do is unpack that. What is this thinking? Is this thinking correct? How could we have a different perspective on this thinking so we could talk across cultures better? Another thing that I'm looking for is no silent dissent. So this is an idea that if someone says something that you disagree with, then you should be like, hey, I don't disagree with, I disagree with this idea. I don't understand why you think this way. Um, let's talk about that so we can better understand both why you think this way as well as why I think the way that I do. And again, we're not going to try to teach each other or we're not going to try to call each other out. We're going to try to understand each other's thinking. And then with that new understanding of the other person's thinking, find a way to understand things in a new and wholly different way 
with the goal of being a better intercultural communicator. And last one I am suggesting is brave space. Uh, safe spaces, in my opinion, are not real places because I don't know about you, but I have never been anywhere in the world that is safe. I've only been in places where someone could say the wrong thing or might do the wrong thing or, you know, where like I have to be brave enough to try to be my full self um, and not just think, oh, I can do anything here and it's going to be completely safe. I don't think those things exist. So because I don't believe that safe spaces exist, I'm going to ask you to exist in a brave space. Be brave. Talk about your situations. Talk about your circumstances. Talk about how you really truly feel about things. And then together as a group, though I am your professor or another professor is in charge of your learning, we're not the only person that knows stuff and we are going to co-create learning and understanding with each other together to become better intercultural communicators. So another ways uh, we can look at norms, like big ways we can see and understand norms is folkway norms. Folkway norms are like shaking hands. It's funny because shaking hands is a little bit different now, right? We bump elbows or we just wave. Um, the folkway norm have changed given our situation and circumstances recently. Another one is a taboo, right? This is a strong negative norm and violating it can result in extreme disgust. So generally speaking, we don't talk about um, intimate sexual relations with strangers, right? It doesn't make sense. That's a taboo. We wouldn't tend to do it. Um, more, another example, is a norm that gives us a sense of what is right and what is wrong, what is acceptable, and what is not acceptable. Like, for example, you might be really thirsty at a grocery store, but most people tend to not open the drink before they buy it and then drink it, right? Uh, because people think maybe that's not right. And then lastly is a law. A law is a norm that is formally inscribed at either state, city, or federal level. So again, my suggested norms, let's see things differently and appreciate a new point of view. Let's attempt to reserve our sense of judgment. Let's understand that there's no such thing as wrong answers. It's just questions and responses that hopefully in the long run help us come to a better understanding of the best way to do things. Um, no silent dissent. So if someone says something you don't agree with, then do something about it, right? So if I said, I think it's a good idea to knock toddlers over when they're walking, you know, not hurt them, but like push them down. Like you would be like, whoa, why do you think that's a good idea? Because I don't think that's ethical. I think pushing over people that are just learning to walk isn't the nicest thing in the world to do. Uh, so that would be an example of like, not just being like, well, he's the teacher. You'd be like, mm, no, I think that's a bad idea. Why do you feel that way? And then lastly, we want to talk about existing in a brave space. This is not going to be a safe and easy conversation. Uh, we are going to attempt to have difficult conversations, but we are going to co-construct learning that really helps us be excellent intercultural communicators. And now in the assignment that you're going to do next, what are five norms you need? Think of five norms, so it has to be five. They have to be different whatever, than whatever's posted. And then post them in your discussion board. Once all the norms are posted, the, you're gonna reopen the assignment, and if you agree with everything, then you don't need to add it to anything. Or if you need to clarify, what does this norm mean? Then you can be like, I don't know if I like this norm, or I don't know if I fully understand this norm. What are you suggesting? Right. Um, if you see all the norms and you like all the norms, you are going to post, I consent to all the norms above, which means we agree that we just set the rules for the class and we are going to play by all the rules of the class. All right. So with that, that's your first assignment. Nothing too difficult. But this is another way as intercultural communicators, we can be better in that we dictate what's good what's okay, what's bad, what's not okay, when we have conversations and it allows us the opportunity to have more productive and beneficial conversations for all people. So with that, this one's a short one. Other things will be a little bit longer and uh, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing your norms and I'm looking forward to us having a fantastic class following the rules that we set for one another. 
With that, peace and blessings, and I will see you in the next assignment.